Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 11, lesson 1, scatter plots. After this lesson, you need to be able to use a set of bivariate data to construct a scatter plot and describe the association as positive or negative and as linear or nonlinear. Let's learn. Construct scatter plots. Bivariate data consists of two variables or two numerical observations. A scatter plot is a graph that shows the relationship between the bivariate data, so between these two variables. The bivariate data is graphed as ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. So here we can see in the table we have two variables. We have time as a variable and we have distance as a variable. You've probably heard of these before just as independent and dependent variables. That is a bivariate data set. So let's let x represent the number of hours. So our time here is in hours, and y is our distance height. Each of these is an ordered pair, so I'm going to kind of draw the parentheses sideways. We have our coordinate 2.5 comma 5. To make a scatter plot, we take each of these data points and plot them on our graph. So at 2.5 hours, we had a distance of 5. At 3 hours, we had a distance of 6.5. At 4 hours, 6.75, and so on. So these dots are the data from the table just shown on a graph. That is what a scatter plot is. And we'll see in future examples that we can use this scatter plot to figure out some information about the two variables' relationship with each other. Example 1. Construct scatter plots. Construct a scatter plot of the number of hours students spend practicing for a driving test and their score on the driver's test. So first, we're given our data table. Let's determine appropriate labels and a reasonable scale for the axis. So if x is our number of hours and y is our test score, or x is our independent, y is our dependent, let's come up with a scale. So if I'm looking at my x-axis, just these numbers, my scores range from 6 at the lowest to 12 at the highest. So I don't really need to go much past 12, and I could just use a little break in my graph and start in year 6. So if we start at 5 and end at 13, that gets all of our data points, and we can look, we're just counting by 1s here, they're all increments of 1, so we should just make our graph also counting by 1. For our test score, we're looking at our y values here. Our scores range from a low score of 65 to a high score of 100. This time, most of these are counting by 5s except for 87 and 93, the rest are counting by fives. Since 65 is pretty high up there, we don't want to actually start at zero. We'll also add another break in the graph to show that we're starting at 65 and not zero. If you're not sure what it means by a break in the graph, we'll look at it when we get to the graph next. Let's graph our ordered pairs from the table. So we have six and 65. So if I go six hours, I'm gonna go up to 65 and plot a point. 7 is with 70, so 7, 70, plot a point. 12 with 100, all the way over here. 8 with 80, 9 with 87, 11 with 93, and 10 with 90. So we can see this is what our ordered pairs would look like as a scatter plot. If you look down here in the corners by the origin, so 0 would be exactly at that corner, we have these little zigzags. Those are showing that there's a break in the graph so that we don't have to use 1, 2, 3, 4. We can just start at 5, or we can skip all the way up to 65. So if you want to start at a number that's not at 0, then put that little zigzag and you can start at the number you want. It shows that you skipped some numbers. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and use the data to create a scatter plot. Pause the video now and complete the check. Let's check. First, let's put our scale. For this one, we can go 0 to 10. We really only need to go 0 to 6, so we could eliminate those 7, 8, 9, and 10, but there were 10 lines, so that's what I put. For our y-axis, our millions of viewers, we're going to start at 20 at this first line and then count by 1s. I started at 20, that way I have a low score and a high score of 31, so I need to at least get to 32. And then I can start at 20, so I put this little line here, or I could make it a zigzag as we saw, showing that I have a break in the graph and I'm starting at 20. Now let's check where your points are plotted. So 
one was at 31.7, two, just above 26, three, at 25, four, just below 25, five, was at 22.6, so between 22 and 23, and then six, just above 22. So it looks something like that. If you chose a different scale for your graph, it does not mean that you are wrong, but your graph should look approximately the same. It just might be a little bit more squished together or spread out depending on which scale you used. Let's learn. Interpret scatter plots. You can analyze the shape of the distribution of a scatter plot to investigate patterns of association between the two variables. These associations go generally with slope. So a positive association, the dots tend to go in an upward fashion to the right. As x increases, so going to the right, y also increases. Notice a positive association is similar to a positive slope. No association, there's not really any obvious pattern. Is it going upward, downward, straight across, vertical? Who knows? There's not any obvious pattern for you to tell. There is no association. This one does not really follow with slope, so be careful. A negative association, as x increases, y decreases. So going to the right, y is going down. A negative association works closely again with a negative slope. If the distribution of points on a scatter plot shows a positive or negative association, then we can determine if it's linear or nonlinear. So a linear, they're going to be pretty close to a straight line. It might not be perfect, but they're going to be pretty close to that line. And you would be able to say this line would have a positive slope or this line would have a negative slope. If it is nonlinear, you might think you could draw a line that kind of separates, but this one would follow more of a curve pattern to try to stay in the middle of those dots. So the dots here lie in the shape of a curve. This would be nonlinear. And we might see some different types of nonlinear where maybe the dots go up and then back down or like this where they're continuing to go up or maybe they start flat and then go down. There are a bunch of different types of nonlinear. But if it looks like the data is curving, then it's probably nonlinear. The scatter plot below shows a positive nonlinear association. So we can see it's nonlinear because it's starting to curve. In that association, there is what's called a cluster. So they are a bunch of points that are close together. So all of these dots ended up about in the same place. Not exactly, but pretty close to each other. That is called a cluster. There is also one point that is way away from everything else. That is called an outlier. So if you have one point or maybe two or three points that happen to be way away, so like if there was another one over here or down here, those are not close to the trend of the dots. Those would be outliers. Example two, interpret scatter plots. The scatter plot shows the relationship between the amount of memory in a tablet and its cost. Interpret the scatter plot. Consider the different associations that we just saw and the positions of the dots. So if we're looking at our dots here, this would have what's called a variable association. That just means that the dots seem to be related to each other. If I look, it looks like it's kind of going in a straight line here. Maybe not perfect, but it's pretty close. As the amount of memory increases, the cost increases, showing a positive association. As I just drew with our line, all of the data plots appear to be pretty close to the line. These two might be a little off. This one might be a little off as well. Maybe our line would be better if we drew it a little bit flatter, like there. But either way, this appears to make a reasonably straight line of our dots. So from what we can see, we could say this appears to be linear. Other things that we might notice in our graph, there's a cluster down here between 0 and 16. All those costs range between $50 and about 200 and there appears to be one outlier, maybe those two as well, depending on where we draw our line. But there's at least one 128 gigabyte should not cost in the $800. Looking at our others, it should cost around $500 to $600. So we could say that is an outlier. Check your understanding. Which is the best interpretation for the scatter plot? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have chose A. As the temperature increases, the number of cups tends to go 
downward, so it should be decreasing. So as temperature increases, it is decreasing. And when it's going downward, that makes it a negative association. The association is relatively linear. It appears to be going in a fairly straight line. There's no clusters, nothing grouped super close together. But we do have one outlier. And it says at about 26, that's right there, 10 cups were sold. Yes. If we were to check through the others, since it's always a good habit to read through and figure out what was wrong with the rest, as temperature increases, the number of cups decrease. That was okay. But the scatter plot does not show a positive. It shows a negative association. It's going downward. As temperature increases, cups decrease. So the scatter plot shows negative. That's good. Association is nonlinear. This isn't really a curve, but if you chose C, we're still getting used to figuring out nonlinear versus linear. There were no clusters, we know, and 26 with 10. So linear, nonlinear, only difference between A and C. For D, as it increases, it decreases. Scatter plot is negative. Association is linear. There's no clusters, no outliers. There's one outlier right there, so that would make D wrong. So A was our best choice, C following a close second, but this is more of a linear pattern than a nonlinear. Example three, interpret scatter plots. The scatter plot shows the relationship between a person's height and their most recent math test score. Interpret the scatter plot. So let's consider our different associations and positions for our variable association. Does this look like it's positive, negative, or no association? I can't tell if the scores are going up or down based on their height, so this would be no association. Since there's no association, no matter what, these points are not going to lie near a line, whether it's linear or nonlinear. So we don't even have to choose since there's no association. And there's no clusters, and if we don't know where the line is, then we can't tell if there's any outliers. So there's not much we can tell about this graph except that there's no association. Check your understanding. Which is the best interpretation of the scatter plot? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said B, the number of email messages someone receives in a day does not depend on the temperature outside. Therefore, it shows no association. We can see this, there's no pattern here, there's no association. If I read through the other choices, this one says there's a positive linear, there's not association. It doesn't matter if temperature increases. Email, we can't tell. Okay, same with C, this is just saying negative, we can't tell. D, there's no clusters or outliers, that's true, but there is no obvious linear association. So not D. 